Hey, welcome back to the workshop. In this crate, I got my next project. And I'm a lucky chap to be able to work on such a thing. This is a, another double pendulum clock, this time by David Walter. So this is in for its first service and a little bit of a fault finding mission. So we'll get into what the fault is and uh, look at the work that's needed for the service. But I'm really uh, privileged to be able to handle clocks like this. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, getting stuck into this one. The problem with the um, calendar work on the David Walter clock here, the uh, perpetual calendar system here, the, the hand jams up which uh, is causing problems and sometimes stopping this this movement from running. Um, so the client has instructed me to have a look and see what can be done because it's done it several times now and uh, we'll take the dial off and have a look and see what's going wrong and what we can do about it. Okay, so we've got the uh, hands removed and I've also removed the four screws that hold the dial in place. So now we can carefully just lift the dial away from the movement to reveal the David Walters take on the uh, George Daniels perpetual calendar system. And that's the mechanism that we're going to be uh, looking at in a little bit more detail as it's giving us a few faults. You can see here that at the moment this mechanism is locked up hard. It's not going to be able to pass. It should be at the point where it's about to uh, fly through the retrograde motion and send the, ha the hand back to zero. Uh, but at the moment it's uh, it's not going to be able to do that so we'll dig a little bit further in and see what the problem is. All right, so what's supposed to be happening is there's a cam back here and that is being uh, pushed on by the mechanism that's just being tripped on, flirted on and what happens is that cam is lifting this uh, uh, this deton here. There's a um, there's a lifting piece here, and you see as it goes on, it moving it gradually, so that it doesn't have to do the lift all in one go, which is um, which is good. And this piece here is going to be getting into the way of uh, this wheel, and um, that's driving another hand for another function. I'll come to a full sort of rundown on what this mechanism is doing um, later on or possibly in another video, but um, I just want to try and demonstrate the fault that we've got at the moment. So you can see what's going to happen is as this is rising, this, uh, this little um, sort of pallet here is going to trip over the top of that tooth and when it drops, the weight of this, when it drops off the cam, the weight of this gravity arm, if you like, is going to instantaneously push the calendar on one more tooth, which uh, I'll try and demonstrate to you now. So we're moving on, the cam is coming round, we're probably at full lift about now and then I think it's going to trip. There you go, on the next one. So that's fine. What happens next, you can see on the next one, this 
is indicating uh, the number of extra uh, days the calendar is going to uh, show, i.e. whether it's going to uh, have a, um, a 31 or a 30 and, the, uh, and, and for the leap year as well. Again, I'll give you a full rundown of the system in full later on, but what's going to happen is as this wheel pushes on the next time, it's actually going to, can you see, it's going to push this um, catching pole out of the way, which is going to be then caught in the unlocked position that will allow this wheel to be free to rotate and as that's sprung on a return when it drops off when this mechanism drops off that will then flick all the way back again which is your retrograde action so again I'll just demonstrate that now and show it working as it should so we're coming to the top of the lift and the next one there we go, instantaneous action, it retrogrades the hand back to zero. The problem, now the problem is that this mechanism, when it's about to go, you're getting up to the end here, so I've made it go too far, hang on. So, yeah, when we're about to go like this, and when the, so this is, this is the kind of fault where it's an awkward thing because you have to sort of simulate the exact situation, right? So when you've got it so that the calendar's about to go, if you were to move the hand on another one like that, It hasn't dropped. It's what's happened is it's locked up in this position. Can you see? So now, no matter what happens in here, you can you can go around as many times as you like with the cam. It's above the the point of the um, of the lock, and it's not going to allow it to go. So that situation occurred because I pushed the wheel on simulating moving the calendar on by moving the hand so you can see it's all uh, locked up at the moment I'll um, demonstrate as well to unlock once you've got into this scenario you have to manually I mean you'd have to take the dial off you have to manually sort of disengage this ball and then allow it to um, sort of to return to zero and then you're back in action again so um, I'll see if I can demonstrate that again to you just to uh, show it a little bit more clearly you can see in this scenario this is the uh, the locked up situation so you can see that no matter what the, the the gravity arm is off the cam in here so it's free to fall and it's trying to push the wheel on, but it can't because the uh, the step here is coming into contact with that, which it shouldn't be doing at that point. Now, the reason that it's doing that is because we've essentially pushed the hand on too far. And there needs to be some form of uh, safety mechanism to prevent it from doing that, in my view. In a watch, it wouldn't be a problem because under a glass, you're not going to be interacting with the hands uh, directly. You're going to be setting the calendar by using a uh, quick set function of some description, a pusher to pump it on or whatever. So the mechanism is always going to be doing what it wants to do. But on a clock, uh, it's kind of part of the design of a clock, for part of the brief is that the hands are going to be interacted with, whether it's by accident 
or whether it's that they're actually the, the clock is set by just moving the hand on. Now, the owner of this clock is uh, is very knowledgeable, and he he does know what he's doing. He he doesn't sort of mess around with his um, with his clocks. So it's it's not user error that's the problem. It's that that there is something sort of inherently wrong with the uh, with the functionality. So we'll see if we can uh, come up with some form of uh, fail safe to uh, prevent this scenario from occurring. It's it's happened a few times now and I don't think every time it's happened has actually been because the hand has been pushed on. So I want to investigate whether there's a a way that the clock can get itself into this into this scenario. Whichever way, uh, we'll find a way around it anyway. Okay, I just want to gain a little bit of better access to the uh, rack that drives the retrograde action of the calendar hand. So I just want to remove the calendar wheel here. That'll just allow me to see a little bit more clearly what's going on. So there's two screws off and then you can take the calendar off. Straight away, I may well have actually found the problem here. It may be a setup problem rather than a uh, design problem. The rack here doesn't run out of teeth. It could, it, it's got room to be much higher. And what happens is when this calendar hand is further around, like this, the rack is obviously being pushed against its spring tension. Let's put it into retrograde, yeah. Let's try again. It's actually, when it locks up, what's happening is the end of the rack there is hitting up hard against here. What I'll do is I'll simulate the uh, the action again to show you, but I think I'm right in saying that this rack should be able to be uh, engaged with the pinion underneath here in such a way that there's room for it to have an absolute full movement and a little bit more before it hits that, which is what it needs so that it can't get into the position where it locks up if it's one tooth, one, day out on the calendar hand. I may not be explaining myself with huge clarity, but I'll, I'll try and do a, uh, a better explanation. Right, so I've simulated the problem now. What's happened is the, the hand has been pushed on a little bit further while the gravity arm is still uh, in engagement. It hasn't dropped yet. And what's happened is even though the ratchet is out of engagement, the ratchet can't move far enough to allow the rack to fall because the rack here is now hard up against this point down here. So I think that may just simply be that this rack is in the wrong engagement with the wheel that's underneath here. I think it should be in a position where it's got a certain amount of over push if you like for margin of safety so that this kind of lockup scenario it could get itself into it but it wouldn't matter because it would just sort itself out on the next uh, calendar change so what I'm going to do is just take this uh, wheel off uh, which will mean taking a couple of other components off I think as well and have a look at the engagement and see if I can correct it
Okay, so I think that is going to solve the problem. Because I can now get a full a full amount of usage out of the rack without it coming anywhere near that stop at the bottom. Also, when it's in this uh, scenario, I know this wheel is not actually in the right place at the moment, um, so um, don't think too far ahead, but I'm just uh, looking at the amount of movement I can get out of it at the moment. But you can see there's actually a, a spring there. If you look at the second tooth along from the left on the rack, there's a spring. And that spring is to soften the, the, the blow, if you like, as it comes to a hard stop at the end of the retrograde action. So that implies that the rack is supposed to rest entirely over to the right hand side which it definitely wasn't doing before. So I'm really pleased about this because it means that we're not looking at a fundamental design problem like I originally thought. Uh, we're actually just looking at a setup problem. So uh, that's really good news. So I'll move on uh, to setting up the calendar as it is, just to verify that it does work like this. And then uh, we'll get on and get involved with uh, servicing the rest of the movement because as you can s probably see it's uh, even though the clock's not that old it's certainly starting to look a little bit like it's in need of a birthday shall we say and a clock like this it's always best to well with any clock really it's always best to service them before they start to uh, wear due to uh, breakdown or loss of lubrication so it's always best to uh, to be ahead of the curve on that front. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to uh, strip it down, check everything over, uh, clean it back together, relubricate, and adjust. So unfortunately, I spoke too soon. It would seem that even with it set up nicely, so that the full charge, if you like, of the spring in here, the rack. There's plenty of room for it here. There's no way that it's going to clout up against here like it was before, but it can still come up against a positive lock if you push the hand on when it's not wanting you to, if that makes sense. So that's actually, I think, because the pawl here comes up against a positive stop pin, and that stop pin is not allowing it to be pushed any further over which means that it's hitting up against the back of it here but it can't move out of the way so the system locks up again so we're back in the same scenario that no matter what you do now this is not I mean, we're well out of the way of that that should that should be free to fall no matter what you do now the system is locked again so, back to the drawing board. I will investigate a little bit further and see if I can come up with a fix. Okay, I've, uh, I think I've found the issue here and hopefully may have come up with a solution as well. So we're back in the locked up scenario and as you can see, we've clarified that it's not the uh, the rack booting up against here anymore, so we, we know that's okay and uh, It's not anything catching up here that shouldn't be catching. I've also checked uh, that this is not catching prematurely of when it should be uh, so let's just uh, Force the uh, the scenario to happen again. You can see down here the uh, get my stick in the right place. Yeah, down here, the cam here. We, we've uh, got the gravity arm on the cam at the moment, so it's in the process of lifting, and you can see here that it's uh, in engagement, lifting on the uh, uh, about to push the um, the wheel around, which is as it should, and uh, just yeah, that's it. So the uh, 
the pull would be in the down position like this. So one more push from here would unlock this by pushing on here, which would allow this to suddenly, because when that's out of the way, this would then suddenly be free to be sprung and return back to zero, which is great. But we haven't got to that point yet. If we were to move the hand on one more, you can see that's unlocked as it should. But if we were to get another click out of it, which we can, now we're in trouble because this can no longer fall. It can't push this far enough forward without hitting here. So in this scenario now, we're locked up again. So that could happen, you know, I mean, that I suppose it would have to be the user that was, um, that had pushed the hand on in error. But as I said earlier, this is a clock and you have access to the hands and it's sort of goes with the territory of a clock that the hands will get nudged or knocked or moved in error. So uh, I see this as a something that needs to be overcome. And I think I've got it actually. I'll uh, just reset the system and then bring you back again. Okay, so I think we now have an answer to the problem. So in this uh, little scenario here, we are just about to get ourselves into trouble. We've got the, uh, the snail here, the cam, is on one tooth away from full lift. So the next um, click of that calendar wheel, um, the next movement of that cam, will push, will, will allow this gravity arm to fall, which should push this on and release the pull here and allow the retrograde action to, to fly back. But, as we've already established, if we were to move the hand on manually at this point, we're going to unlock the ratchet here, but it's not going to fly back because we're still in engagement. And if we're able to move the hand far enough on that we can get another click out of this, we're then in the scenario where it doesn't have enough movement to be able to get past the, the positive stop here. I've put a little mark here, and that mark is uh, indicating to me a tooth that I could use that will make it a revolution. It ends up back here somewhere, uh, but it doesn't have to come through engagement. Not that that actually matters, but um, anyway, that's a tooth that I've highlighted as a potential useful tooth and if we were to have a block on the plate or a cock of some description but I was thinking just like a, a block or, or a stud even could even be just like a, a stub arbor with a flat on it in fact that may actually be the more elegant solution we could have a pin in the wheel at this point on the back side it would have to be a relatively short pin because there's not a lot of clearance here which it would have to come past. But that's the only point where clearance would be an issue. So as long as it was a short enough pin to clear that but still be useful, then it would work. Uh, that pin would prevent us from getting a full click. Now we want it to be able to push on almost a full uh, click because we want it to be able to push on far enough that uh, it will do that. So those four dots there are 28, 29, 30 and 31 just so that you are aware what those dots are meaning. Uh, we will come round with the cam and begin lifting the gravity arm. Okay so the gravity arm is lifting and now we're getting into the danger zone of causing problems. Okay so the next one is when it will fire. So if you were to move the hand on another full tooth, you would be in trouble. But we could go as far as there and let it come back again and it should still work. Okay. And the thing we need to just find out as well is how far it needs to move 
and do its own steam just so that that uh, stop block wouldn't actually cause the whole system to foul up anyway so let's get to that point so the next one I'm going to release it but I'm going to move the rack the gravity on manually so it needs to move on okay so I think if we had that stop block in the position where I originally said so that it was just so that it would flick that but not allow the the push part of the pole to do an extra click so we've unlocked but we haven't clicked over there I think that is the sweet spot I think it has to come hard up against there and then no matter what you do will allow it to release so I think that's the solution